Is it likely to get worse? Are we expecting this to worsen? 7.27, that means it's time to get the news, the travel and the weather where you are. Good morning from BBC London, I'm Victoria Hollins. Police have discovered what they've called a significant cannabis factory. OK, let's get a check on the travel situation then and the weather's got in store for us all with Elizabeth Rizzini. Good morning. A lot drier today across the capital than it was yesterday, but tomorrow temperatures for many spots dropping below freezing. Tomorrow, lighter winds, mostly dry, plenty of sunshine around, but again, watch out for one or two showers. There could be some rain on Saturday. All right, so I'm back with the latest from the BBC London newsroom in an hour. There is, of course, plenty more on our website at the usual address. Hello, this is Breakfast with Naga Manchetti and Charlie State. Good morning to you. Time now is just after 7.30. Thanks for joining us. US President Joe Biden. Levels of coronavirus in the community may have risen over the first 10 days of the third lockdown. That's Centres will open today in England as the rollout of the programme continues. In some regions, the over 70s are now receiving the jab, while in other areas, those in their 80s are still waiting. Ministers have... Paper operator Saga has said anyone going on one of its holidays or cruises this year... Time now is 7.33. Coming up a little bit later, we're going to be talking to Helen Glover, of course, double Olympic um, champion. She's going to be um, taking us through... Do you know, there are so many people who are at home thinking, am I fit enough? I'm just sitting around all day. I've got kids to look after, children to look after, homeschooling, blah, blah, just piling on top of you. And Helen, obviously, has, has been at that peak of physical fitness, obviously, in her career, hasn't she? She's trying to maintain it. She's got twins and three children. And in the briefing notes, the thing that made me laugh this morning, it said, depending on who's not having a nap, she's going to grab whichever child is awake to show us how we can exercise with children. You know, in a funny kind of way, I wonder, given her uh, extraordinary career in, in rowing yeah. and the, the success she's had, well, in a funny kind of way, the pressure is great on her because people think, oh, you should be able to handle it, you can handle anything. Or is there a more important job than bringing up another well, human true. being? That um, so that is Helen Glover, and she's going to be talking to us in about 15, 20 minutes. 7.34, let's go to one of the stories we've been covering a lot, of course, here on Breakfast. Schools have been closed to most children since the start of January, and many parents will be wondering when they will reopen. We can speak now to the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson. Very good morning to you, Mr Williamson. Of course, we know that uh, some schools are open to a uh, greater or lesser degree for key workers, leaving them to reopen. Well, we're in a position where we had to close schools very much as a, as a national decision, very much in the national interest to relieve pressure on the NHS, reduce movement as part of the actions as the national lockdown. Uh, as you and uh, so many of your viewers be wanting to see is schools opening at the very earliest opportunity. But we had to do that on the basis of the very best scientific and health advice. Uh, we're not in a position to be able to say that uh, we will give, you know, uh, not just uh, schools and teachers the time to be able to prepare, but also the, uh, you know, we'll giving children the time to get ready and parents uh, uh, enough notice to be able to uh, get everything ready. So we'd be hoping to give everyone two weeks notice uh, in order for them to be ready uh, to ring whether schools can reopen, as and when that is. What are the figures that you'll be looking at that will mean you can make that decision to reopen? So when we had uh, been in the position where, you know, a decision that none of us wanted to take, and as you will understand, is that, you know, as an education secretary, you always want to keep schools open for all children. Um, the key reason as to why we had to take that national decision to closed school so as they're not have the gates open to every single child it was down to pressure on the NHS. The pressure on the NHS is starting to lift that able to welcome all children back into school civic advice the best health advice so as you know pressure on the NHS is is higher now than it ever has been 10 day two week lag so there is a period of time coming up when we know for certain effectively it's baked in that that will increase or stay as it is so there is no process prospect immediately of that changing, therefore schools will no decision will be made during that time. 
So, so what we'll be doing is looking at all the data, um, but you know, the key key thing is is to get children back into school at the earliest point. But you know, this is a decision that has to be uh, you know guided by the best scientific and health advice. I do recognise how important it is for children to be in the classroom because, quite simply, children learn best by being in the classroom. Uh, due to the fact that there is mounting pressure on the NHS, we had to reduce movement within society uh, that's what the the basis of uh, the schools not being able to be open to every single child was based on so saw back in september is the full return of all schools back in september we've actually very successful return we'll be wanting to repeat that but we're wanting to put extra measures in over and above that uh, we've seen already the rollout of mass testing uh, in secondary schools have this mass testing available to them as well and we'll be looking at building on that it's going to be a, a key part in terms of returning children back into schools and it's already demonstrating really good results because, as you rightly have pointed out, there's, there's many children, uh, you know, schools have kept their gates open for the children of critical workers and, of course, for the children who are most vulnerable in society. That has been rolled out in those schools is expanded to all pupils as they return. Really important part of reinforcing the safety and the security of, uh, you know, both children and staff themselves. So go through some practicalities. Well, obviously, if a, a student has a, a, a negative test, what you'll be hoping to do is very much uh, uh, enjoy the day's education going forward. We've, uh, as I say, we've rolled out this testing regime um, and it's already in operation in uh, so many schools up and down the country and working really well. So we've proved that it can work. But if that student has a positive test, uh, they're immediately given a PCR test and uh, instructed to go home, take the test. That data is logged immediately with test and trace. Um, uh, the PCR test is sent back to test and trace where uh, they will then get results. And as we've seen with test and trace, it's a very rapid turnaround in terms of the results. Obviously, uh, the contact with that individual would have to self-isolate uh, as has been expected and as we have all been doing. Now, it's been close to one of those who tested positive, you would get a series of tests which meant that you could stay in the class. Is that no longer the plan? So we had trialled this system extensively in schools before Christmas, uh, working with the MHRA, Public Health England, uh, clinics, so are you doing pupils. it? So, um, you know, what we've been asked to do is to pause that element. I thought you said it, it worked really uh, well. Because, so why uh, are you pausing it? Because public health, it's, sorry, I didn't mean to talk across you. No, I just you, you said a moment ago it worked really well. So now you've uh, decided you're pausing um, it. Um, um, so we've been doing both the mass testing, but what you're talking about is the seven-day testing. Yes. It had worked really well, uh, but what the challenge is with the emergence of a new variant, what we've been asked to do by Public Health England is that they wanted to look at more detail as to how that was working with the new variant. So that's what we're doing, working with them. Uh, we very much hope, really very much hope, that we're able to re, uh, restart that programme that's worked so well on the okay, so, so let me just be clear. Uh, so uh, the way the no, new the way the new plan works, if I may, is that in in those circumstances, we're, is out. Well, That's all those where contacts. We were. Uh, so uh, all those contacts that that uh, youngster had had, yes, they would have to sort of uh, self-isolate. But what we'd be hoping to do is, as I say, by putting the mass testing right at the sort of uh, the start of term, making sure that this mass testing is effectively going right across the school, actually reducing the amount of contact that youngsters would have with someone that is positive, because obviously they don't then start entering uh, that school day. We're starting off very much with a clean slate. And this isn't just good for pupils, it's not just good for those who work in schools. It's of course really good for the community because we're really rooting out the virus. How many and, you know, uh, vaccines, if I may, I just part. want to get through a little bit more sure. territory uh, as well. Yeah, so, so, uh, so testing is already fully rolled out to both uh, primary school uh, teachers and those who work in primary schools as well as secondary schools as well. So that's already uh, 
very much uh, there and available to school staff. Um, you raised the issue of vaccines, and it's absolutely right that we are vaccinating those who are most likely to be hospitalised, those who are most likely and most at risk of dying as a result of coronavirus in that first wave. But it will be no surprise to you whatsoever. I want to see uh, all teachers, all support staff uh, vaccinated at the very earliest well, moment. Are they being prioritised? It's so incredibly important. Uh, you know, uh, that's where, you know, it's, it's absolutely right that we are prioritising those who are what most... Is, OK, so what does that mean in practice? If, if you say, forgive me again, I, I'm... And what, what I was saying is, you know, the first wave, the first priority, quite understandably, is those people who are most at risk of being hospitalised and that are, you know, in the category that are most likely to uh, die as a result of coronavirus. Uh, I would certainly be hoping, as I, I'm sure so many uh, teachers and those who work in schools would very much hope that, uh, you know, the vital important work that teachers and teaching staff uh, and support staff do. Uh, I, I'd very much like to see them, uh, you know, uh, up that list uh, when there is uh, those people who are most vulnerable to coronavirus have been uh, vaccinated and looked after. But also, you know, we do have to remember we are coming out of this. Uh, OK, if, and I just... If uh, I we may, are actually... Um, I'm very so, mindful of so, uh, uh, how little time we have. Uh, you will know that Labour has called on you as Education Secretary to resign for a series of errors and a series of miscalculations involving uh, exams, involving admissions to schools, involving the testing process. Are you secure in your job? You know, it's really interesting for journalists and politicians to talk about... Uh, uh, journalists and politicians. But, you know, what we're launching today, we're launching a skills for jobs paper. Uh, I wonder, it's you about just, could, you just, could you just answer the, the one question, uh, please? You know, um, it's absolutely about focusing and actually creating really great skills for young people and people of all ages in order to be able to get into the very best job and the very best career. That's what my focus is on, making sure that we bring schools back, children getting the benefit for being in the classroom, a great education. Yes, we are in a global pandemic and we've had to take decisions, decisions that, frankly, I would never have wanted to have to take or be in a position of uh, being in the place of having to close schools. Well, part of the problem uh, here is, uh, Mr Williamson, if I may... Vulnerable. But, you know, we are focusing in terms of actually getting children back into school. That's my job. Agreed. That's my focus as education do you think, sector. Do you think, Cameron do you think... Can I ask you one last thought, please? Uh, uh, I'm sorry of for course. In interrupting. Do you think you've done a good job? Uh, you know, our focus is making sure young people get the very best. We're in a global pandemic. And when we look at what we're doing in terms of the skills for jobs, this is about making sure, because, you know, so much of the media would love to sort of talk about, you know, those youngsters who are going to university, really important uh, what universities do for so many young people. That's only 50% of young people going off to university. We don't have enough focus, you know, whether it's in the media, in terms of what you talk about, and in the past, not not enough focus, even in sometimes in in, we, uh, in Westminster, on those 50% of youngsters. I would often call them the forgotten 50% that aren't going on to university. And what we've been outlining today is a plan to make sure that businesses, very much like you see in Germany and Switzerland, where they actually are really able to influence actually uh, the courses that young people are able to take, you know, getting chambers of commerce really involved in designing courses. So every course a youngster takes or someone of any age is actually giving them the skills to be able to get a job. Okay. That's what our focus should be about building back better out of this pandemic. That's what we're doing today. That's what I'm announcing. And I really do okay. appreciate the opportunity that you've given me to come on to talk to you about it. Education I'm not Secretary... sure if there's any questions that you would like to ask us about, uh, you know, sort of talking about these vocational technical qualifications. This is so incredibly important. What I suggest, people, Mr Williamson, to... is that we're, we're, it's something we're, we're very interested in the programme. We have done previously. We will do more on that. It's not for now, but we really appreciate your time this morning. That is the Education no, Secretary, thank you. Gavin Williamson. I look forward Williamson. to joining you again to talk about it more.
11 minutes to 8 is the time. Thank you for being with us this morning on Breakfast. Now, Matt has some really important weather news because we've got numerous flood warnings.